The introduction of Bad Samaritan here at WonderCon, it's quite an unusual setup uh, to, uh, to be here at a comic book convention to promote a thriller just like this. Well, I think, you know, that the people here are fans of genre entertainment in general, you know, and the thing that I've always liked about cons, I've been going to them since I'm 13, is that it is literally the least pretentious people on the planet. They come here to celebrate entertainment that they enjoy, and they make no apologies for it. And, you know, this is a movie that has some fanboy roots. You know, David Tennant, having been in as Kilgrave and Jessica Jones or Doctor Who, and uh, Robbie from Misfits, and the stuff I've made. You know, I think the people who like our work tend to come here, and I think that they tend to like genre entertainment. And this is not an art film. This is definitely genre entertainment. So, you know, we're, we're being embraced in a way that uh, uh, perhaps other thrillers might not be. Now, this, this is an unusual project. When I actually hear your name, I associate it with something big and lots of explosions and such. And for, for this film, this is much more small, a bit psychological. This is not something people are used to seeing me do, especially tonally. Um, but I, I was fortunate enough to be given this script, and I fell madly in love with it. And I said, you know, I, I really want to make this movie. So I knew it was gonna, I was going to be out of my comfort zone. I was going to have to do things I had never done before. But uh, that's what made it exciting and challenging. You know, and until we screened it, I had no idea if I'd completely screwed it up or not. <laughs> but after the first screening, we all felt like, all right, I think we, I think we got away with this. Well, thank you for keeping some kind of explosion in, in the film. But you know, it wouldn't, I can't put my name on it if something doesn't blow up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what in particular attracted you to the script of uh, Bad Samaritan? Well, I think it was this idea of a semi-morally ambivalent character who makes the worst decision of his life and gets to a point where if he allows that moment to define him, he can't live with himself. And so he'd rather actually die changing that moment than living with that moment. And I found that to be such a compelling and interesting thing. I think that to much lesser degrees, we all have those bad Samaritan moments where we've made a decision we regret. And how we handle that really tells a lot about our character. If we rationalize the decision, it says one thing. If we try to, to make amends, it says something else. Now, why was David Tennant uh, so terrifying? I mean, I have never seen any, him like this before. He's a remarkable actor. I think, I think he's actually one of the most underrated actors in our business. Um, and, and I don't think people really understand what an enormous fan base he had. You know, uh, I, I've worked with a lot of big stars, but this was the only time I ever had 30 people on set almost every day trying to get a glimpse of an actor walking to the trailer to and from work. Um, he's just, he's enormously skilled. He's one of the nicest people I've ever worked with in my life. And he commits himself to whatever he does. If he does it, he doesn't, he doesn't hedge it. He doesn't try to make himself as a person look good. He commits to the character. And it was, it was very interesting. It, it would literally be, if I said action, the shape of his face would change. His mm -hmm. eyes would change. And then I would say cut, and then he'd go back to being David again. I mean, it was a remarkable transformation. In a film like this, do you find it more challenging with a smaller budget, or is it uh, more challenging with a larger budget for yourself? I think every film has its own challenges. You know, my dad used to say to me, making a small movie is no less hard than making a large movie, but you get paid better on the large movie. But, uh, you know, I, just, I think budget should be what you need for a movie, you know, and this movie was much more about character, so it didn't, it, it didn't lend itself to a large budget, and we were making the film independently, so we weren't going to have the money anyway, uh, so it, it just kind of fit into a nice pocket. Now, on to some of, possibly some of other projects. Are we going to wait another 20 years for Independence Day? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, Currently, uh, I personally have no plans on doing another one. <laughs> what about uh, some rumors, rumors about like Stargate or something like that? Well, they are continuing now with a new Stargate series. I'm not involved with it. Uh, I don't know what plans uh, MGM has for the franchise. There was a point where Roland and I were going to do a... a, a we were going to kind of reboot the series, but that, that's not going to happen now. So I don't really know what's going to happen with Stargate. I, w I wish I owned it. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrific. And are you going to go back to uh, directing again? I think so. I think so. I, I, I'm not sure what the next project will be, but I really enjoyed this movie. This was the first time as a director that I really felt good about the entire process. Um, 
and I'd like I'd like to continue that. Perfect. Hey, it's it's very awesome, and I really enjoy the fact that uh, you you let you let some women fight back in this movie. Right? You know, it's interesting because we shot this before the Me Too movement started, but a lot of women who've seen the film have said, you know, this is actually kind of the ultimate Me Too movie. So uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how, the way people interpret the film. Awesome. Hey.